Recently, I talked about this awesome trick I learned of Prusa Research parts for supporting holes without using support material, but I didn't really explain how to do it in CAD. So I thought I'd revisit that idea with that concept, as well as several other ways you can use to support your parts without using support material using Fusion 360. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and a big shout out to my community members over on the Makers Muse community. If you're interested in joining for just five bucks a month, you can get access to content like this a week earlier than anyone else, as well as behind the scenes content and ask your 3D printing questions over in the troubleshooting forum. You can find more information in the video description below. Support material sucks, we all know that, but avoiding it can be quite difficult. And over the years, I've come across various different ways of designing parts to avoid support material. And the classic case of trying to avoid support material is this. You have a bore with a hex nut or some sort of detail underneath it, and you need that to print. Now, yes, everyone in the comments will say, well, just flip the orientation, print it like that. That would be the number one thing to do. It's the first thing I try is to try to flip the orientation of a part to make it print without needing support material because each layer before it will support the layer after it. And you can't 3D print over thin air, well, kind of, but you can't easily support this bore if it's printed like this without support material. But there's different ways we can change our geometry to make this work. And I thought in this video, I'd do a deep dive into how I model these geometries to make my parts work without support material. Because in some cases, yeah, you will have to print like this. So suspend to disbelief. Don't type in the comments, well, you should just flip it. Let's just pretend for a moment, this part must print in this orientation. How can we make it work without support material? Well, the first thing you could do is just send it. Let's just print it without support material and see what happens. This is the result and it's pretty much what's expected. The first few layers failed. They had nothing to adhere to and so sort of made this little bit of a rat's nest underneath the bore. But I'll be honest, with a bit of force, you can get the screw in and it does eventually recover and you can get the nut into it as well. So yeah, it's not elegant, but in very, very small cases like this is an M6 nut, you could just print it without support but it's not the best option. So what's the second easiest way to print a detail like this without support material? Well, if you watch any of my previous content at all, you'd know that it's sacrificial bridging. Bridging is a phenomenon where you can bridge a string of molten plastic between two points over thin air, and then from there fill in like a platform that can support the part above it, but there's nothing underneath it. But for a bridge to work, it must go between two points in a straight line. It can't curve in thin air, it's not gonna work. So sacrificial bridging takes advantage of that concept by doing a very, very thin solid layer, maybe like 0.4 millimeters thick, and then bridging across a gap that it otherwise fail. So in this case, all I've done is with my detail, I've drawn a sketch in that area where the hex would start to form the bore. And in Fusion, you just hit P to project lines. And all I've done is I've projected the edge of that bore like so, and then you select that detail and then you do an extrude of a, a very small multiple of the layer height you intend to go with. So 0.4 is two layers of 0.2. And I find it's a good thickness for a sacrificial bridge that's fairly strong, but one you can bust away afterwards. And I'll say, okay, make sure it's going in the right direction and then join. And just like that, that part is modified so you can print without support material. I have used sacrificial bridges for years and I talk about them in my ebook, The Ultimate Guide to 3D Printing Tips and Tricks. And they work really, really well, but they do have one serious downside. They need to be busted through to make the bore work. So sometimes you can just force the screw through, like if it's like a small screw or it's just a really, really thin bridge. But often you need to use like a drill or a scalpel or something to cut it away carefully which leaves a raggedy edge and is another machining step that needs to be done after the print's complete. So it can be a little bit inconvenient, especially if you have hundreds of parts that now must have that hole busted through using a drill or something similar, which is where these next tricks come in because they leave a open bore, but no support material is required. This next trick takes advantage of the 45 degree overhang rule with 3D printing. And that trick is where you can overstep the previous layer by a certain amount without the part failing. And the amount you can do that depends on your layer height and your extrusion width and your cooling, et cetera, et cetera. But generally 45 degrees from the vertical 
is a good safe number for an overhang that works in most applications. And it's one I tend to design as my models. So if I'm trying to avoid support material, I'll go from a detail to a 45 and then back to another detail. And that 45 will allow the previous layer to support the next one. And you can do that with our hex here. So to add this 45 degree detail, all I've done is I've selected the profile for the hex and then I've done a taper angle of minus 45 degrees, which forms it into this sort of diamond point here, like so. And that leaves us with a clean bore that will print without support material, but we still have that hex detail. And this simple change works incredibly well. We have a very, very clear bore with no filament or wispy bits or failed print that lets us just insert that nut and screw in that screw. Now there is an obvious issue with this 45 degree, however, and that is if you try to tension this bolt too much, you essentially created a wedge in the part. Those 45 degree angles, there's, there's nothing there, it's a void. And that nut's gonna be trying to force into it and just explode the part in the process. So I'd only really recommend doing this for things that have a light loading or if you happen to have a nut that has that sort of conical shape to it, that would actually snugly fit into this. But otherwise, it's really only a detail we're doing to make the bore easy to print. And it's not the best solution in the world, but it is very, very easy to do. But if we're looking for the best solution possible, well then we have to go to that detail that I found in the Prusa Research prints, and that is using sequential bridging. Visually, this part looks very, very similar to all of the others, unless you look inside it. And then you see this tricksy detail here, which I like to call sequential bridging. But it's a detail I first came across on the parts from Prusa Research. Now, I don't know if they invented it, but it's where I first saw it, and it's incredibly clever. So what this is doing is instead of a sacrificial bridge going across in just one layer, it's doing two sets of bridges to let us have a smooth open bore instead. So as you can see here, we've got this first bridge that occurs. And then after that, it does a second bridge and then it does the bore. Now the bore still has some curved edges overhanging. You can take it one step further. I've done three layers of sequential bridges here where it's like one, two, three. But I've found with at least small bores, like with this M6 nut, two is totally fine. And any bit of filament that is overhanging in those small areas that aren't supported is really negligible. But for much larger bridges, you might want to try doing three or even more to fill up those layers to support the overhang part. But just stepping back to the two layers of sequential bridging, I want to show you how I drew this using one sketch. Now bear with me, this is advanced CAD knowledge using Fusion 360, but if you can understand this, it will turbocharge your 3D modeling capability in the software. So let me step back and show you the sketch I did to start everything off. So here we have the original sketch and this sketch is used to draw the entire part. And we're doing that because each different extrude is done based on an object's surface starting point instead of the original sketch plane point. Now I'll show you how that works in a second, but we have the hex here for the M6. We have the bolt hole for the six millimeter bolt. And then we have the outside of the part like that. And finally, we have our sequential bridges. So we have the first bridge like this, and this area will be supported by that bridge as it forms. And then the next bridge after that would be this one here. And then finally, it's gonna form just these little edges there, which again, they're small enough that they don't really need support, at least at this scale. And the part forms like that. So how do I construct this model using multiple extrudes with the same sketch? Well, we start with the hex offset, and that's just done from the profile plane. But then we have the bore offset. And I've done that from the object start, which is the surface of the previous extrude. So to show how that works, if it was from the profile plane, it'd just be from the sketch up. But by selecting from the object, I can select the surface of that previous extrude. And then it's gonna extrude its own amount by 2.5 millimeters here. So you can see that no matter how much I change that previous extrude, I can make it like 100 millimeters deep, it'll still start from the surface of it, which is really, really powerful for parametric modeling. And what, how I like to do the sequential bridging is to add it at the end, because I see it as a detail you add purely for 3D printing, so I add it after doing the original modeling. And because of that, I do it backwards. So bear with me, it's a little bit confusing, 
But we're going to do two extrudes, and each one will start from the inside surface here of that bore. So we're going to start with the second bridge, and then go back to the first bridge, and then that's done. And it looks like this. The first detail is done here on that bore, and that's what the second bridge looks like, right? I've selected just the profiles for that extrude, and the starting point is that surface that I need for that detail. And then stepping back one more time, that's the first bridge that occurs, and I've selected just those profiles. So just to show you, in this case, the profiles selected are these ones, like so. And this bore's got a little bit of uh, overhang there, so make sure I select that too. And again, the object or the starting point is that surface that I want to extrude from. So from the previous one. It's very difficult to explain and I wish I could do it better, but I will share these files over on the Makers Abuse community at the bottom of this uh, video post. So you guys can have a play with it and figure out how you, how you want to form it. You could go the other way around if you wanted to. You could start with your hex and then do your first bridge, second bridge, and then bore. That might make more visual sense to you, but I tend to do it as an afterthought once I've modeled my parts and I realize, oh, that hole needs support. How am I going to do it? So that's, this is generally how I do it for my real world models. And then finally, we have that little chamfer, which again, we're printing like this on the print bed. And that just gives you a little bit of extra wiggle room to avoid elephant's foot. And uh, especially when you're putting like a, a nut into a surface, you want to avoid that at all costs. So it's a nice snug fit without any dimensional deviation. And that is the many ways you can support overhung holes with FDM 3D printing without needing support material. It's very technical, but this is how you absolutely level up your 3D modeling skills because by avoiding support material, you avoid the need for any sort of post-processing of your model. And also you make it so that the part's always gonna print. You don't have to worry about someone printing your model and then, oh, they didn't use the right support settings or, oh, their printer welds support into place. They can't remove it from a bore. By taking these techniques into your own designs, you can make them more successful more often for more people. And that's my aim here on Makers Muse to empower your creativity through technology. And it's these little details that just keep an eye out next time you're 3D printing someone else's cool design to see what else you can learn from what they use to make their models easier to print. And let me know in the comments below or here on Makers Muse in the community, the, the thread below this, this video, how you make your models easier to print using little design tweaks and changes. Cause yeah, again, I'm learning all the time. I only figured out this Prusa Research uh, trick recently. I've been doing sacrificial supports for years and doing like like 45 degree overhangs for years, but this this sequential bridging thing, it's, it's definitely an eye opener for me. And I'm gonna be using it pushing forwards to make my designs even more fancy and is even easier to use. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video here on Makers Muse and I'll catch you again very shortly. Bye.